Marcus Rigby is one of the 13,000 missing people cold cases in the UK. One of the vanished. Where is he? Is he safe? Has he come to some harm? Has he just gone off the radar? Is he homeless? Now there could be some hope. Marcus's family shed light on his life. This is how we believe Marcus would look now. At times he may have used the name Mark Smith. Whilst a team of experts searched for clues. There were that many sightings that it gave a hope. Investigate leads. Looking to see if Marcus would have stayed at any bed and breakfast or a guest house. And look for answers. It is really weird because the name does ring a bell. It's like having a hole missing in your family. And it always has been. And it always will be until we know what the answer is. It's like you're never complete, really. And we're always waiting, expectant to either find something out which reveals the mystery of where he is or what happened. For 28 years, sisters Nicola and Sam have wondered where their brother, Marcus Rigby, is. In 1995, aged 27, Marcus, also known as Mark, said he was going away and would phone in a week. That call never came. I suppose at first I thought, oh, he'll turn up in a few weeks. And then it's only as time passes, you're thinking, well, actually, hang on, he's not come back and he's not coming back. What, what, what do we do next? Now might be the time the family can finally find answers. Nicola, Sam and stepdad Jeremy have come to the University of Central Lancashire. They're meeting Locate International, a charity for cold cases. Their expert volunteers will talk to the family as they look at all aspects of Marcus's life in the search for clues. Their founder is former detective Dave Grimstead. It's about making sure that everything that can be done is done so that you've got to understand what might have happened. There's sometimes that kind of gap in the, in the information that you wish you know, and then suddenly when you start lining it up, it matches with something, and that could be the missing piece. Yeah. I've got his letters, which give indications of his plans, his personality, his handwriting. I'm really excited to have them look into Mark's case. I want to really get on board and offer them everything that we know about Mark. Would you be able to yeah, verify yeah. any of this? So Mark was born on the 15th of October 1967. Yeah, you start theorising and, you know, what's been the trigger for it. So then you start to become more worried and thinking, well, where is he? Is he safe? Has he come to some harm? Has he just gone off the radar? Is he homeless? The question for the family is what could have led their loved one to disappear without a trace. Mark was a very gentle, kind-natured person. He had a great sense of humour. He's 14 months younger than I am. So, in a way, we're contemporaries. Spent much of our time together. Looked out for me as I looked out for him. Even though he was the younger one, he still looked out for me. The more Locate understand why Marcus disappeared, the more they can come up with credible theories about what happened to him and even where he might be. And you mentioned that you said he was unwell before, you said this was around the 90s, he was unwell before. Do you know around what sort of, like, was there a time period around that where he was, where he was quite unwell? Do you remember? 98 to 987. When Mark was a teenager, he experimented with some drugs and that did make him ill for a little while. He ended up needing uh, medical help. 
he'd have an injection every two weeks, and by the end of the two weeks, he was starting to make a recovery, really. He was getting better, and he had a, an, a peace about him and uh, a hope that probably I hadn't seen for a number of years, so it was, it was lovely. In 1995, just before he went missing, Marcus was living and working at Cape and Ray Bible School in Lancashire. For a while he'd been doing really well, but he started to get a bit distant from the family. My mum said, I think you should go and see him, he's not as good. And in the final time that I saw him, he wasn't as good as he had been, he was distant. It wasn't much longer after that that he actually went. But he went with a positive note. He said he wanted to look for work, he wanted to go down south. It was a plan that he wanted to carry out, very much of his doing. He's got a right to go and do what he wants to do and, you know, live his life if he wants to do it differently. Absolutely, you know. But Mark had said he would call and he didn't call. When you've never had somebody missing before, you really don't know where to begin, how to begin looking for somebody. Those early stages, we didn't have a clue whereabouts in the country to start looking for him. Marcus's mum, Mary, reported him missing in June 1995, but they have never been able to trace him. Dave has arranged a chat with the last people to see Marcus, his aunt Bet and her husband, Paul. When Mark came and he made it very clear, he did not want me mm. to tell Mary or the family that he was there. It's quite clear that he was wanting to get away. Mm. He wanted to go to Weymouth. He knew Weymouth. He had obviously enjoyed his time there and liked it and liked the area. He felt he could get work. He was going to keep in touch with us. Mm. He never suggested that we would never hear from him again. Over the years, the family have continued the search, making numerous appeals for information. In 2001, they had a particular reason for wanting Marcus to come home. Is there anybody in there? Hi! <laughs> what are you doing in there, Lucy? I'm going to have breakfast in the tent. My younger sister, Lucy, when she was 14, was unfortunately in a road traffic accident. While she was in intensive care, me and my sister, Nicola, put out a TV appeal for Mark to see if we could get a message to him to come and see Lucy before she died. There were that many sightings around the Weymouth area that it gave a hope that that's where Mark would be located. There were too many sightings for it to just be a coincidence. So this lady is a, a nurse who thought she treated Mark at um, a, a doctor's surgery in Weymouth. Um, and this was a very recent sighting as well, when she rang up. She described him quite accurately. Yeah, right, and, okay. and the treat, so and, definitely, yeah, yeah. So pretty certain it was him. Yeah. So that was two... So that least, was in 2007. Yeah. And then this one, where they thought they knew him, and was, but he was known as Smithy. So whether, whether he changed his surname to Smith or just, right. just yeah. a pseudonym he was using, I don't yeah. know. With a sighting of Marcus 12 years after he went missing, there's hope he's still out there. Locate will spend weeks investigating and hope to find more answers. For Dave and his team, it appears clear where they need to go next. Weymouth appears to be the place to go. It still feels like there aren't areas to explore. We've talked to, to Bet and Paul, I've never spoken to the police before, so there's more information that we can gather about Mark, about his situation, that could really inform whether Mark might still be out there.
We know that Mark most likely came to Weymouth in the summer of 1995. He would have been looking for work. Um, he may have struggled with his mental health, may have struggled with, with addiction. It's been a few weeks since they met Marcus's family in Preston. From those discussions, it's clear there is still hope that Marcus is alive. But one of the really important questions that we ask you is, what do you think happened? Maybe he's living under the radar, either under a new identity or perhaps working for cash in hand, that sort of thing. Dave and his team have arranged to visit places they think might be relevant to Marcus. He has an extra tool to help him, a new age progression image they hope might jog people's memories. Making connections with those living on the edge of society can be hard. Dave has information about a local project offering food to the homeless. By coming here, there's the opportunity to spread the story of Marcus to those living off the grid. So we've come to Bethany Hall to talking to people from the community who are not going to necessarily see the website, they're not going to have that internet connection, they might be wary of talking to the police maybe. But just talking to people here, they, they care about somebody who might be missing. So somebody might have that piece of information that makes a difference. Alongside trying to reach out to certain networks in the area, the team have one very specific place to investigate. Just south of Weymouth is Portland, an island connected to the mainland by a spit of beach. It's here that we have Marcus's last known address in 1995. Back in the summer of 1995, we know he was in Artist Row. We know that a cheque from his account was uh, given to, for accommodation that he'd stayed at for a couple of nights. So we're back in Artist Road to start knocking on some doors, really, and see if we can speak to people who may know people who were around in 1995 or were around themselves. Looking to see if Marcus would have stayed at any bed and breakfast, okay. if there was a bed and breakfast or a guest house or a rented accommodation. For... Not that I'm aware of in the street, but I don't know, because I wasn't here in 95, but I can certainly move, um, ask some people that might know for you. I think what we've quickly established is the, the residents have changed over time, but people have still got those networks. People have moved on from here, but we know where they've moved on to, all of which may have information. You know, Mark might have spent some time talking to them. They might have knocked on a few doors himself back in the summer of 1995, looking for accommodation. Uh, people who live here now who can help us connect with the right people, just might have a piece of information that helps. I don't understand why he never came back. I don't understand it. So I suppose these days I'm more of a quandary as to what happened than I ever used to be. Mark missing is like an open-ended bereavement. I know that for his mum it was super painful. Every birthday and Christmas, I could see how distraught she was. Mum passed away in August 2021. It wasn't always an unanswered thing for her, but she never gave up hope. She was always hopeful that she'd find him. Her mum's feeling was so strong that he was around. I always expected him to come back before my mum died, but he didn't. So that, that leaves me wondering. I don't know. Dave's final stop is a mental health drop-in centre. There is a potential he could have changed his name because that happens. We find a lot of our clients 
you know, when we dig a little deeper, it's like actually that's not the name that they present to themselves. So I think the the photo would be useful because he could be going by something else locally to the local people. And we know at times he may have used the name Mark Smith. Um, so yeah, you're right. So somebody may not know the name, but they may recognise the, the face. It is really weird because the name does ring a bell, if I'm honest. It seems Locate's investigation on the south coast may have opened up some possibilities. It's several weeks later, and Dave is visiting Marcus's family. He's tracked down what is thought to be the last photo of Marcus before he disappeared. I have not seen that no, before. No, I've not seen that. No. That's really interesting. It is very interesting. Using that and feedback from the family, there are updated age progression images. You know, to date, there's nothing that tells us whether Mark's alive. There's nothing that tells us that Mark is, is dead. So what that means is that we can keep going with the investigations to see if there's anything out there. The search for Marcus is set to continue. His family still hope that one day they will see him again. Rediscovering what happened to Mark, it's an emotional journey, but at the end of the day, Mark's his own person and there's no pressure. Yeah. You know, I, I would never want to put him in under any kind of pressure at all. That's not what this is about. It's just about reaching out and if he is out there, to let him know he's still welcome home.